Chapter 12 Jesus speaks in parables Matthew 21, 28-46 and Luke 20, 9-18. Mark 12 verses 1 to 9, KJV, and he began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard, and set an hedge about it, and digged a place for the wine fat, and built a tower, and let it out to husbandmen, and went into a far country. And at the season he sent to the husbandman a servant, that he might receive from the husbandman of the fruit of the vineyard. And they caught him, and beat him, and sent him away empty. And again, he sent unto them another servant, and at him they cast stones, and wounded him in the head, and sent him away shamefully handled. And again, he sent another, and him they killed, and many others, beating some, and killing some. Having yet therefore one son, his well-beloved, he sent him also last unto them, saying, They will reverence my son. But those husbandmen said among themselves, This is the heir, come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. And they took him, and killed him, and cast him out of the vineyard. What shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandmen, and will give the vineyard unto others. A certain man, God, a vineyard, the nation of Israel, and hedge, the law, the wine fat, where fruit would be pressed. Isaiah 63 verse 2 KJV Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? A tower, the temple. Husbandmen, the religious leaders of Israel. A far country, heaven. A servant, the prophets. The fruit, the souls of men, and obedience to the law. One son, Jesus Christ, the Lord of the vineyard, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Mark 12 verses 10 to 11, KJV, And have ye not read the scripture, the stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner, this was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes? Mark 12 verse 12, KJV, And they sought to lay hold on him but feared the people, for they knew that he had spoken the parable against them, and they left him and went their way. The parable, Jesus began to speak unto the religious in parables at this time in his ministry. They had seen all the signs needed to confirm who he was to them, but they rejected them and said they were from the devil. Jesus did not fit their idea of what the Messiah should be. These men had the word of God given to them as God's people, and with that they had the added responsibility to see him as the fulfillment of it. Because they rejected the written word of God, the word of God incarnate, and the spoken word of God, Jesus would now speak in parables to them. Privately Jesus would explain the parables to his faithful. Parables were meant to conceal things from his enemies who had rejected the truth already. Render unto Caesar Matthew 22, 15-22 and Luke 20, 19-26. Mark 12, verse 13, KJV, And they send unto him certain of the Pharisees and of the Herodians to catch him in his words. The Pharisees and of the Herodians, these two groups worked together at times when they had a common enemy. The Herodians were political, and they were loyal to Herod, and to Rome who had appointed Herod. To catch him in his words, the religious leaders, the husbandmen, needed Jesus to say something against Rome so that they could get him put to death, which would only fulfill the parable he spoke against them. Mark 12 verses 14 to 17, KJV, And when they were come, they say unto him, Master, we know that thou art true, and carest for no man, for thou regardest not the person of men, but teachest the way of God in truth, is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar, or not? Shall we give, or shall we not give? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Bring me a penny, that I may see it. And they brought it. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? And they said unto him, Caesar's. And Jesus answering said unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him, to give tribute, a form of taxes imposed by a conquering army. Hypocrisy, a hypocrite is someone who does something he preaches against.
These men did not want to give to Caesar, but they would not dare say so for fear of their life. Had they known who it was they were trying to catch in his words, they would never have dared to question the Messiah in such a fashion. They should have feared rejecting their own Messiah more than displeasing Caesar and considered his words. The Sadducees questioned Jesus Matthew 22, 23-33 and Luke 20, 27-40. Mark 12 verses 18 to 25, KJV, Then come unto him the Sadducees, which say there is no resurrection, and they asked him, saying, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If a man's brother die, and leave his wife behind him, and leave no children, that his brother should take his wife, and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were seven brethren, and the first took a wife, and dying left no seed. And the second took her, and died, neither left he any seed, and the third likewise. And the seven had her and left no seed, last of all the woman died also. In the resurrection therefore, when they shall rise, whose wife shall she be of them? For the seven had her to wife. And Jesus answering said unto them, Do ye not therefore err, because ye know not the scriptures, neither the power of God? For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry, nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. First, Verse 25 means only what it says, not what we may think it says. It must be understood in its context. The context is the family relationship in the kingdom. It is not talking about a believer today and what things will be like in heaven. In the kingdom, those Jews who were married in the past which believed in Jesus will become priests in the kingdom and they will not be married. He is not talking to us in the body of Christ. He compares their future to that of the angels in heaven who are not married. Mark 12 verses 26 to 27, KJV, And as touching the dead, that they rise, have ye not read in the book of Moses, how in the bush God spake unto him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living, ye therefore do greatly err. They did not care about the answer, they cared about debunking Jesus with a question that they had befuddled the Pharisees with. Jesus told them they erred because they did not know the scriptures. It was their job to know, believe and obey the scriptures, but they did not even believe in the hope of Israel, to be resurrected into their kingdom to live forever with their king. Jesus made it clear that Moses mentioned God as the present tense God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as if all three were not dead, but living at that time. They were all in paradise, or Abraham's bosom at that time, waiting to be resurrected into their kingdom when Christ returns. The first of all commandments Matthew 22, 34-40. Mark 12 verses 28 to 34, KJV, and one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength, this is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he, and to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself, is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God, and no man after that durst ask him any question. Jesus knew the thoughts of the scribe and saw that he was looking for answers, not like most of those who were trying to trap him in his words. This scribe, after seeing how his fellow scribes were treating Jesus, answered him discreetly, and Jesus told him that he was on the right path to the kingdom. If he kept searching the word, he would see that Jesus was the son of David, the Christ. Christ is the son of David, Matthew 22, 41-46. Mark 12, verses 35-36, to 36, 
KJV, and Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, how say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? For David himself said by the Holy Ghost, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Psalms 110 verse 1 KJV. A Psalm of David. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The son of David, Jesus' title verifying that he was the rightful descendant to sit on David's throne as Israel's king. Mark 12 verse 37, KJV, David therefore himself calleth him Lord, and whence is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly. God the Father said to God the Son, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool, David called Christ his Lord. Christ is the son of David, so, if he were his descendant, the son of David, how could that be possible, unless his descendant was truly the Christ? The common people had no problem with this, but the religious did. The widows might Luke 21 colon 1-4, Mark 12 verse 38, KJV, and he said unto them in his doctrine, Beware of the scribes, which love to go in long clothing, and love salutations in the marketplaces. Salutations, greetings, Mark 12 verses 39 to 44, KJV, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and the uppermost rooms at feasts, which devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers, these shall receive greater damnation. And Jesus sat over against the treasury, and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury, and many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples, and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more in, than all they which have cast into the treasury, for all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Two mites, which make a farthing, a mite is one quarter of a denarius, a Roman dollar. A farthing was half a denarius. The scribes would buy their long clothing from the money they would take from the widows, whose own dwelling places they would also take from them to supply their lavish lifestyles, all in the name of religion. You cannot steal from a widow who God says they should be protecting, and then turn around and give that money to God to be seen by others. They were the modern-day self-proclaimed philanthropists, saying, Look what I just did. Am I not a godly, generous person? Chapter 13 Jesus prophecies the temple's destruction Matthew 24, 1-2 and Luke 21, 5-6 Mark 13 verses 1 to 2, KJV, And as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answering said unto him, Sayest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. As he went out of the temple, Jesus had just finished pronouncing seven woes upon Israel's religious leaders in Matthew 23 and the disciples began to show Jesus the buildings of the temple in Matthew 24 verse 1 as they left. There shall not be left one stone upon another. This would happen in 70 AD when shall these things be Matthew 24 3-31 and Luke 21 7-28. Mark 13 verses 3 to 4, KJV, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? As he sat upon the Mount of Olives, immediately after Jesus tells of the temple's destruction, he goes down the Kidron Valley and he walks all the way up the Mount of Olives. He then sat there and waited for the disciples to come to him. Matthew 24 verse 1 KJV And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to shew him the buildings of the temple. Matthew 24 verses 2 to 3 KJV And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? When shall these things be, 
after he tells them of the temple's soon destruction, he skips over the dispensation of grace, and he begins to tell them of the tribulation period. That is because the body of Christ was a mystery hid in God from before the foundation of the world. This would not be revealed until Jesus reveals it to the apostle of the Gentiles, Paul, years later. Colossians 1 verse 26 KJV Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. The church, which is Christ's body, is referred to by Paul as the unsearchable riches of Christ, Ephesians 3 verse 8. You cannot find the body of Christ in the Old Testament because it is not there. What shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? You can find the kingdom church in the Old Testament that Peter, James, and John were a part of. It is all over the Old Testament, and it is a fulfillment of the Old Testament promise to Israel. Mark 13 verses 5 to 6, KJV, And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed lest any man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Many shall come in my name, this is not during the dispensation of grace. We have also had false Christs during the last 2000 years. This is speaking of the time of Jacob's trouble, but they will all be impostors because Christ comes with the clouds and every eye shall see him. Revelation 1 verse 7, KJV, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, Amen. Mark 13 verses 7 to 8, KJV, And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and troubles, these are the beginnings of sorrows. Wars and rumors of wars, all this begins in Revelation 6 as the Lamb opens the first of four seals revealing the four horses and their riders. The beginnings of sorrows, this is a term used in Matthew 24 verse 8 to teach about what it will be like for Israel in the time of Jacob's, Israel's, trouble, also called the tribulation period, and the 70th week of Daniel. Mark 13 verse 9, KJV, But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. In the synagogues ye shall be beaten, this whole chapter describes that terrible time that is yet to come upon Israel, not the body of Christ. Notice the believers are delivered up to councils and in the synagogues. The gospel must first be published Matthew 2400 hours 14. Mark 13 verses 10 to 11, KJV, and the gospel must first be published among all nations. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, Take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. The gospel must first be published among all nations. This is the gospel of the kingdom. Matthew 24 verse 14. Mark did not know the gospel of the grace of God that would later be revealed to Paul. Matthew 24 covers the same period as this chapter in Mark, the tribulation period. Matthew 24 verse 14 And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Endure unto the end Matthew 2400 hours 13. Mark 13 verses 12 to 13, KJV, Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son, and children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. He that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. This is talking to Israel after the dispensation of grace ends with the rapture of the body of Christ. They must endure to the end of the tribulation period and not take the mark of the beast. It is not talking about us today keeping the faith unto the end of our life. That is works. We are under grace today. Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9, KJV, For by grace are ye saved through faith, 
and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The Abomination of Desolation Matthew 24 colon 15 dash 28 and Luke 21 colon 2024. Mark 13 verse 14, KJV, But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that read death understand, then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains, Daniel 9 verse 27, KJV, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. The abomination of desolation, it is the image of the beast in Revelation 13. Matthew 23 verse 38 Your house is left unto you desolate. Let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains, they will not even have the brief time they had when they fled from Pharaoh. Mark 13 verses 15 to 19, KJV, And let him that is on the house stop not go down into the house, neither enter therein, to take anything out of his house, and let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. But woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. For in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. Jeremiah 30 verse 7 Alas! For that day is great, so that none is like it, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Mark 13 verse 20 KJV And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. Except that the Lord had shortened those days, Jesus stops abruptly the seventieth week of Daniel by destroying Satan's armies with the word of his mouth at the completion of the Great Tribulation period. Revelation 19 verses 11 to 21 KJV And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written, that no man knew, but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings, and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come, and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast, and the kings of the earth, and their armies, gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse, and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. This will immediately put an end to all the war and death occurring at that future time, which if Jesus did not intervene at that moment, then Satan would have killed all of the elect of Israel. The elect sake, the word elect is mentioned 20 times in the Bible, and only 4 times in the whole Old Testament. The first time it is used of Jesus, who is called God's servant. Isaiah 42 verse 1 Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth, I have put my spirit upon him, he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. The only other times the word elect is used in the Old Testament are also in Isaiah, and they all speak about Israel, not some religious group today. Isaiah 45 verse 4 For Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name, I have surnamed thee, 
though thou hast not known me. Isaiah 65 verse 9, And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob, and out of Judah an inheritor, of my mountains, and mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. Isaiah 65 verse 22, They shall not build, and another inhabit, they shall not plant, and another eat, for as the days of a tree are the days of my people and mine. Elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. The elect are those in the tribulation period whom he hath chosen to be his servants. Who is the book of the Revelation written to? It is written to Israel. Revelation 1 verse 1. Why was it written to them and not to us? To shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. It was even written by a fellow servant John. God had elected Israel to be his servants back when he called Abram from the U.R. of the Chaldees, not us. Revelation 1 verse 1 The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent, and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Seven times the word elect is mentioned in the Gospels, three times in Matthew 24, and three times in this chapter of Mark, plus once in the Gospel of Luke. They are all talking about Israel being his servants. Israel is elected to serve him, not elected to be saved. Mark 13 verses 21 to 23, KJV, And then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or, Lo, he is there, believe him not, for false Christs and false prophets shall rise, and shall shew signs and wonders, to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things, and shall shew signs and wonders, to seduce, these are not the signs in the heavens we read about next. They are signs to seduce people that the Antichrist is really the Christ. The devil is using seducing spirits and doctrines of devils today, not signs. 1 Timothy 4 verse 1 KJV Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Mark 13 verse 24 KJV But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. After that tribulation, the beginning of the second half of Daniel's 70th week is called the Great Tribulation. Matthew 24 verse 21 KJV For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Revelation 2 verse 22 KJV Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Revelation 7 verse 14 KJV And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, Isaiah 13 verse 10 KJV, For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light, the sun shall be darkened and is going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Joel 2 verse 10 KJV, The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Mark 13 verse 25 KJV, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. The stars of heaven shall fall, Revelation 12 verses 3 to 9 KJV, and there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God, and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, 
called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The powers that are in heaven shall be shaken, Isaiah 13 verse 13 KJV, Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place, in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. Mark 13 verses 26 to 27, KJV, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels, and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. The Son of Man coming in the clouds, this is his revelation when every eye shall see him. This is not the rapture. The rapture was a mystery that was not revealed until Christ revealed it from heaven to the Apostle Paul many years later. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51 KJV Behold, I shew you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. His elect, the elect here are Jewish believers in the tribulation period, not Gentiles in the body of Christ. We are elect today as well because we are in Christ. God's elect servant, but just what are we as members of the body of Christ elect to do? Our election according to chapter 1 of 1 Thessalonians is to serve the living and true God. 1 Thessalonians 1 verses 9 to 10 For they themselves shew of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he Raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. The wrath to come, this is the tribulation period, and we in the body of Christ are delivered from that wrath. Jacob, Israel, is not. Israel must go through that terrible time because she broke the covenant that she made with God at Sinai, and God has promised 70 weeks of punishment upon her for her rebellion. 69 of Daniel's 70 weeks have passed already before they were interrupted by the dispensation of grace. Immediately following the rapture of the body of Christ, Israel will have to receive her final week of chastisement from God for her breaking of her covenant with God. The parable of the fig tree Matthew 24, 32-35 and Luke 21, 29-33. Mark 13 verses 28 to 31, KJV, Now learn a parable of the fig tree, when her branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is near, so ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, that this generation shall not pass, till all these things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. The fig tree, Israel. When her branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, Israel's branch will begin to put forth leaves in the tribulation period when the 144,000 from each tribe are sealed. They are called the first fruits unto God and the Lamb. Revelation 14 verse 4 KJV. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Summer is near, the kingdom of God is at hand. Luke 21 verse 30 KJV When they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. When ye shall see these things come to pass, what things? The signs mentioned beginning in verse 5 down to the end of the chapter. This generation, this is speaking of the generation that is alive when these things in the tribulation period begin to be fulfilled and are all fulfilled. When the world sees the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place, then that is the generation that will see all these things come to pass. That day and that hour Matthew 24 36-51 Mark 13 verse 32 KJV but of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. That day and that hour, the day being spoken of is mentioned above as the day and hour when Christ returns to set up his kingdom. This is not the rapture. It is Christ returning to Israel at the end of the tribulation period. Could any man alive at the time of Jesus speaking that prophecy know the day or the hour? 
No, they were just learning things about that day as Jesus was speaking, and the dispensation of grace had not even begun yet. Can any man in this present dispensation of grace know the day or the hour of Christ's return? No, because it will not happen in the dispensation of grace, but seven years after the dispensation of grace has ended with the rapture. Could any man in the tribulation period know the day or the hour? No, notice it is the day and hour of his return that is being mentioned, not the week, month, or year. Could you if you were living in the tribulation period and seeing the signs coming to pass figure out how many years were left before Christ would return? Yes, there are seven years in the tribulation period and when you get to the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel stand in the holy place you would know it is half over. So, if you were alive then, you would know that three and a half years from now Jesus will return, but can you know the day and the hour? No, neither the Son, Jesus was fully God and fully man since his conception, he was not half one and half the other. The man part was fully man and he hungered and got tired, he felt pain and thirsted, he was hot and cold. How is it that the Son did not know the day nor the hour of his return if he was God? The same way that God cannot remember Israel's sins in the future. Hebrews 8 verse 12 KJV for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Hebrews 10 verse 17 KJV, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Does God cease to be God when he does not remember Israel's sins anymore? Of course not. Jesus never ceased being God at any moment in the past, nor will he when Hebrews 8 verse 12 and 10 17 are fully realized. Don't tell me that what he really meant was that he is no longer holding them against them anymore, because God would have said that here instead. Stop looking for reasons not to believe a portion of scripture, it means what it says. We just do not understand everything going on here. That is all. He is who he said he is. Mark 13 verses 33 to 34, KJV, Take ye heed, watch and pray for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house, and gave authority to his servants, and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. A far journey, Jesus went back to heaven to sit at his Father's right hand until his enemies be made a footstool. Psalm 110 verse 1 KJV A Psalm of David The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. His house, the house of Israel. His servants, the disciples of Christ. Luke 9 verse 1. The Porter, Jewish believers in the tribulation period. Mark 13 verses 35 to 37, KJV, Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you I say unto all, watch. The master of the house, this is Jesus. This is not talking about the rapture at all, it is talking about the revealing of Jesus Christ when he comes back with clouds, and every eye shall see him. The rapture was not revealed until Paul received it as a mystery, and it was not taught until he taught it in 1 Thessalonians, 1 Corinthians, and other places in his epistles. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51 Behold I shew you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Chapter 14 The Feast of the Passover Matthew 26 colon 1 dash 5 and Luke 22 colon 1 dash 2 Mark 14 verses 1 to 2 KJV After two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. The feast of the Passover, Passover commemorated the time when the death angel passed over the families that had the blood of the Passover lamb applied to their doorposts at its top and on its two sides. Exodus 12 verses 1 to 7 KJV And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months, it shall be the first month of the year to you. 
Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year, ye shall take it out from the sheep, or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood, and strike it on the two side posts, and on the upper door post of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. Unleavened Bread, Exodus 12, 8-13, Take him by craft, by guile, deceit, or subtlety. Jesus is anointed for burial Matthew 26, 6-13 and John 12, 1-8. Mark 14, verse 3, KJV, And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard very precious, and she brake the box and poured it on his head. Simon the leper, Simon was healed of his leprosy at that time, as no one could go into the house of a leper. Matthew 11 verse 5 Judah's father's name was Simon. John 12 verse 4 Only in John's gospel is Judas Iscariot mentioned as Simon's son, and he does so four times, always implying that Simon was well known by John's readers at that time. John 6 hours 71 minutes, 12 colon 4, 13 colon 2 and 26. There came a woman, this was Mary the sister of Martha and Lazarus. John 11 verse 12. Mark 14 verses 4 to 5, KJV, And there were some that had indignation within themselves, and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than three hundred pence, and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. There were some that had indignation within themselves. Judas was the main one. John 12 verses 4 to 6 and Matthew 26 verses 6 to 13. 300 pence, a couple hundred dollars. Mark 14 verses 6 to 9, KJV, And Jesus said, Let her alone, why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will ye may do them good, but me ye have not always. She hath done what she could, she has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. To anoint my body to the burying, Mary knew Jesus was going to die when the disciples did not. John 12 verses 1 to 8 KJV Then Jesus six days before the Passover came to Bethany, where Lazarus was which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for three hundred pence, and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, and had the bag, and bare what was put therein. Then said Jesus, Let her alone, against the day of my burying hath she kept this. For the poor always ye have with you, but me have not always. This Gospel, the Gospel of the Kingdom. Matthew 4 verses 17 to 23 KJV from that time Jesus began to preach, and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the 
gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. For a memorial of her, she remembered that Jesus said he was going to die. The disciples did not. Judas betrays Jesus Matthew 26 colon 14 dash 16, Luke 22 colon 3 dash 6 and John 13 colon 21 30. Mark 14 verses 10 to 11, KJV, and Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priests, to betray him unto them. And when they heard it, they were glad, and promised to give him money. And he sought how he might conveniently betray him. Judas Iscariot, it was at this time that we read that Satan had entered Judas. Luke 22 verses 3 to 6 KJV. Then entered Satan into Judas surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way, and communed with the chief priests and captains, how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and covenanted to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Judas is called the son of perdition in John 17 verse 12, a title only given to him and to the Antichrist, who is known as the man of sin until Satan enters him, and he then becomes the son of perdition. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3 KJV Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. He sought how he might conveniently betray him. He would betray Jesus by leaving the upper room while the disciples all remained with Jesus. Judas was the leaven in the upper room that needed to be removed. Mark 14 verse 12, KJV, And the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, his disciples said unto him, Where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? The first day of unleavened bread, there were seven days of unleavened bread in total. Exodus 13 verse 7 KJV Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee, neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. And prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover, they would have to go to the sheep market and purchase a lamb for Passover and then cook it as required in Exodus 12 verses 8 to 9 KJV, and they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire, and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. Mark 14 verse 13, KJV, And he sendeth forth two of his disciples, and saith unto them, Go ye into the city, and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water, follow him. A man bearing a pitcher of water, the man with the pitcher probably already knew to be there waiting for Jesus' disciples to see him, but it could have just as easily been a surprise encounter. Judas did not know where they would eat the Passover until it was time to go there, or he would have used that opportunity to betray Jesus while he was trapped in an upper room. Mark 14 verses 14 to 16, KJV, And wheresoever he shall go in, say ye to the goodman of the house, the master saith, Where is the guest chamber, where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will shew you a large upper room furnished and prepared, there make ready for us. And his disciples went forth, and came into the city, and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. The goodman of the house, we do not know how this was all arranged. I would assume an angel visited him, or it could have been planned earlier in the day when they went to get their Passover lamb. Mark 14 verses 17 to 21, KJV, And in the evening he cometh with the twelve. And as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, One of you which eateth with me shall betray me. And they began to be sorrowful, and to say unto him one by one, Is it I? And another said, Is it I? And he answered and said unto them, It is one of the twelve, that dippeth with me in the dish. The Son of Man indeed goeth, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good were it for that man if he had never been born. In the evening, Passover was done in the evening with a few disciples. Exodus 12 verse 6 Judas departed to betray Jesus after he dipped in the dish with Jesus. 
The Son of Man indeed goeth, as it is written, Isaiah 53 verses 1 to 12 KJV, who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground, he hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely, he hath borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth, he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, he hath put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied, by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Woe to that man! For him to have never be born would have meant that he would not have had to have died and went to hell to suffer for all eternity. His body and his blood Matthew 26 colon 26 dash 29 and Luke 22 colon 14 dash 23. Mark 14 verses 22 to 24, KJV, And as they did eat, Jesus took bread, and blessed, and break it, and gave to them, and said, Take, eat this as my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. This is my body, the bread was symbolic of the body of Christ that would be broken for them. This is my blood, the fruit of the vine was symbolic of the blood of Christ that was about to be shed for many. When the fruit of the vine is fresh it is called the fruit of the vine, fruit juice. When it is fermented it is called wine. Deuteronomy 32 verse 14 Thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. He called what was in the cup my blood of the New Testament. Blood was shed at the inauguration of the first covenant. Exodus 24 verse 8 KJV And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. Blood also had to be shed to inaugurate the New Testament. That happened when Jesus was whipped and then nailed to the cross. Mark 15, which is shed for many, Isaiah 53 verse 11 KJV, He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. It does not say for all in Isaiah. In 1 Timothy 2 verse 6 however, Paul tells us that he gave himself a ransom for all. Colossians 1 verse 14 and 20. This is not a contradiction. He died for many in Israel's program, but Paul informs us he died for all in the mystery program that was later revealed to him as the apostle of the Gentiles. Mark 14 verse 25, KJV, Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine, until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. The fruit of the vine, until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God, he cannot drink it while he is exiled in heaven currently. The fruit of the vine is freshly squeezed unfermented juice from the vine. The Lord's Supper was not Passover. They were two meals in one. 
the Lord's Supper happened during the Passover meal. Verse 22 shows us that Jesus interrupts the Passover and institutes the Lord's Supper. It is called the Lord's Supper because it was done in the evening. It is not the Lord's lunch. Mark 14 verse 26, KJV, And when they had sung in him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Psalm 22 verse 22, I will declare thy name unto my brethren, in the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. Mark 14 verse 27, KJV, And Jesus saith unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. Zechariah 13 verse 7 Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man. That is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts, smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn my hands upon the little ones. The sheep, they are the little flock, and this prophecy means that God will disperse them into all the world again during the tribulation period. Luke 12 verse 32 KJV Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Mark 14 verse 28 KJV But after that I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. Mark 16 verse 7 Mark 14 verses 29 to 32 KJV But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. And Jesus saith unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this day, even in this night, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. But he spake the more vehemently, If I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise, also said they all. And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane, and he saith to his disciples, Sit ye here, while I shall pray. Gethsemane, the word means oil press. It was located on the Mount of Olives. Mark 14 verses 33 to 34, KJV, And he taketh with him Peter and James and John, and began to be sore amazed, and to be very heavy, and saith unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death, tarry ye here, and watch. And began to be sore amazed, to agonize. Mark 14 verses 35 to 36, KJV, And he went forward a little, and fell on the ground, and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee, take away this cup from me, nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. The hour might pass from him, verse 41 below. This cup, this is the hour that is mentioned in the preceding verse, which concerned his betrayal and suffering. Mark 14 verses 37 to 41, KJV, And he cometh, and findeth them sleeping, and saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldest not thou watch one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away, and prayed, and spake the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, neither wist they what to answer him. And he cometh the third time, and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest, it is enough, the hour is come, behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. The hour is come, to be betrayed. Matthew 26 verse 45 KJV then cometh he to his disciples, and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. The hand of sinners, sin is the transgression of the law. 1 John 3 verse 4 KJV Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. The word sinner is defined as a person who is a prostitute, a tax collector, or a false prophet. Jesus describes the chief priests and elders of Israel as sinners. Mark 14 verses 42 to 46, KJV, Rise up, let us go, lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. And immediately, while he yet spake, cometh Judas, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves, from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. 
And he that betrayed him had given them a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same as he, take him, and lead him away safely. And as soon as he was come, he goeth straightway to him, and saith, Master, Master, and kissed him. And they laid their hands on him and took him. A token, a sign or signal. Psalm 41 verse 9 Yeah, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of. My bread hath lifted up his heel against me. Mark 14 verses 47 to 50, KJV, And one of them that stood by drew a sword, and smote a servant of the high priest, and cut off his ear. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Are ye come out, as against a thief, with swords and with staves to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and ye took me not, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. And they all forsook him and fled. One of them that stood by, it was Peter. John 18 verse 10 KJV Then Simon Peter having a sword drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus healed the ear of the servant of the high priest whose name was Malchus. The scriptures must be fulfilled. One of those scriptures was that when the shepherd was struck the sheep would all scatter. Zechariah 13 verse 7 KJV Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts, smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. Mark 14 verses 51 to 52 KJV And there followed him a certain young man, having a linen cloth cast about his naked body, and the young men laid hold on him, and he left the linen cloth, and fled from them naked. A certain young man, the certain young man is John Mark, the writer of the Gospel of Mark. Mark 14 verses 53 to 62, KJV, And they led Jesus away to the high priest, and with him were assembled all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes. And Peter followed him afar off, even into the palace of the high priest, and he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. And the chief priests and all the council sought for witness against Jesus to put him to death, and found none. For many bear false witness against him, but their witness agreed not together. And there arose certain, and bear false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. But neither so did their witness agree together. And the high priest stood up in the midst, and asked Jesus, saying, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him, and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am, and ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Daniel 7 verse 13 KJV I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Psalm 110 verse 1 A Psalm of David The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The high priest had to examine two goats on that day from the children of Israel in Leviticus 16 verses 7 to 10 and cast lots for each one. The lot that was the Lord's would have the sins of many, Israel's, confessed and laid upon him, and the innocent goat would die for the guilty as a sin offering for Israel. Mark 14 verses 63 to 65, KJV, Then the high priest rent his clothes, and saith, What need we any further witnesses? Ye have heard the blasphemy, what think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. And some began to spit on him, and to cover his face, and to buffet him, and to say unto him, Prophesy, and the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands. Rent his clothes, Reuben was the first to rent his clothes when he saw that his brother Joseph was not in the pit. Genesis 37 verse 29 KJV And Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes. It was done in times of great grief or anger. Christ could not deny himself. The one they said they longed for was standing in front of them, and they condemned him to death.
Jesus spoke of this previously. Mark 12 verse 7 This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and the inheritance shall be ours. Mark 14 verses 66 to 72, KJV, And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there cometh one of the maids of the high priest, and when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him, and said, And thou also wast with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand I what thou sayest. And he went out into the porch, and the cock crew. And a maid saw him again, and began to say to them that stood by, This is one of them. And he denied it again. And a little after, they that stood by said again to Peter, Surely, thou art one of them, for thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeth thereto. But he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not this man of whom ye speak. And the second time the cock crew. And Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said unto him, Before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he thought thereon, he wept. Jesus would later ask Peter if he loved him more than these. Jesus may have been referring to his fishing friends where Peter was when Jesus was questioning him, or it could have been his family. Do you remember what he and the others were told they needed to do concerning others close to them regarding following Christ? Luke 14 verse 26 If any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yeah, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Chap